Welcome back to another All Stars Today's Fun Project. Well, today we're going to discuss some torque action. I've got a uh, digital torque wrench that was sent to me from Gear Wrench. Now, they didn't pay me to do the video, uh, they just sent me the tool, and I'm happy to do a review on it only because I really enjoy the tool. And it was by chance that Mike, the disgruntled mechanic, if you haven't checked out his channel, check him out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Anyway, Mike said, um, I was doing a review. Once in a while, I'll do a tool review. It was on the Earthquake XT 3 8 uh, battery operated ratchet, which by the way is working very well. But anyhow, I had a bolt in the vise and I was doing some measurements as far as how much torque that applies. And I had the old micrometer type torque wrench, you know, it's the old click, click, click kind. And uh, he, you know, he had made a comment saying, you need a digital torque wrench already. So anyway, I don't have to put on my old man glasses because I can see the little digital screen on this bad boy pretty easily. This is the model 85077 right there. I'll leave a link to this tool in the description down below if you're interested in more uh, information on it. But anyway, we're going to give it a shot today. I'm going to open it up. I've actually personally been using it for two or three months now and I find the tools fantastic. It's very convenient. It's real simple to use. This thing has uh, LED lighting to, for as, as far as indication. LED, it's got the digital screen. It has uh, sound, so it has audio tone and it also vibrates, which we can't go wrong with there. So when you reach your specific torque that you set, and I'll show you all this in the video, uh, it automatically will, you know, there's lights, there's buzzing, and there's noise. So how fun is that? Anyway, we'll put, uh, I'll put a bolt in the vise here. We'll give it a go. I'll show you some of the features. It does several different types of measurements like Newton meters. As far as foot pounds, it does 25 to 250. So if you, you're putting on 250 pound feet, and uh, let me tell you, that's some strength right there. So that'll give you a workout. And, I don't know, old guys might have a little difficulty getting to that point, but hey, that's how it goes. Uh, what else does it have? It has the kilograms per feet. Uh, so if you're in other countries, you know, you can use this. We, we usually go with inch pounds. It also does that. I think it's like 300 to 3,000 inch pounds. So anyway, let's get a uh, bolt in the vise. I'll get you set up over there with the camera action and uh, we'll see how it goes. Let me pop it out of the case here and get a closer look. So it comes in this plastic case. There's the tool right here. And what I did notice, like I said, I've used this uh, for a couple months now. It does come with its own, you know, it's serial numbered. And the paperwork here is, uh, the unit is serial numbered and it's calibrated. And it tells you the date it was calibrated. So that's nice to see, nice to have. And then it comes with a full set of instructions, which, uh, hey, we don't read instructions. But anyway, here's the tool right here. Let me give you a little more close-up details on it. So this is your power button right here. Of course, this is the digital screen, so that's how you fire it up. Your uni is for the different measurements, unit of measurements that you're in. This percentage button is your target torque alert, is what it's called. So I'll explain that in just a second. Up and down is your settings, and then set just means you lock it in. So to turn the machine or turn the unit on, just hold the button down for a few seconds, and it's going to alert you. So basically, I don't know if you saw, it said 10%, which is our target torque alert, and I'll explain that in a second. It was at 30 pound-feet is where we're set. Yeah, that's right at the top here. You can see that right there. And... Um, Basically, that's it. We're ready to go. So let's say we wanted to change that torque value. So what you would do is you hit right here, set. Am I in the shot? There you go. I am. So we're at 30. Let's say we wanted to go up to, I don't know, 32 pound feet. You're being real specific here. It does do it in tenths uh, increments. So let's go. So you hit 32. It's flashing there. You can hit set. It said save. And now this percentage for the target torque, we're at 10%. So basically, when we get within 10% of that value, which was 32, this thing's going to start alerting us audibly. And the light will you know, it'll kind of make a little chirp or beep sound. That way you know you're getting close. So I've got a bolt in the vise here with a nut and some washers. We're going to use that as our uh, test. 
I still have this set to 30 pound feet. I did increase the um, torque, target torque to 20%. So that means, you know, 20% of 30 is six. So when this gets to 24 pound feet, it's gonna start alerting us that we're getting close. And I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up, but you can keep an eye on the screen right now, we're at zero. So let me start bringing this in. Of course, the nut is loose. And as soon as we start getting some torque on it, you'll see that start counting up. Okay, so we hit 27 right there. Now we're at 28, and I'm gonna take it up to 30. Hopefully you can hear it buzzing. So you wanna be as smooth as you can with it. Why don't I uh, increase the torque? Let's try it a little higher. I'm gonna set this to 50, and let's see what our percentage is. So we'll hit C or set to save it, and we're at 10%, so that's fine. Hit C, set. And I don't know why I keep saying C, but that's what it does. It saves it. So 50 pound feet at 10%. That means at 45, this thing will start buzzing at us. Let's give it another shot. Of course, we're at zero. I'm not sure if the camera can show that, but as you can see, and what's nice is when you let off on the uh, handle right now, at that point, we're at 35.7. So it's telling us as we go, which is nice. Now, if you can't visually see it, sometimes you're working on a tire or a wheel and you're pushing down, you can't see the screen, you still have that um, indicator, that sound indicator, and you can feel the vibration. I'm hoping you guys can hear it. Um, let me put some torque on it. it. It resets to zero after a few seconds once you let go, but once you start pulling, it will calibrate again. See right there, we're at 33. So let me do a full swing here and I'll be quiet and hopefully you'll hear the buzz. Okay, so hopefully you got the idea. I try to go a little slower than I normally would just so you can pick up on that. So what I really like about the tool is how comfortable it is in hand. It has like this vinyl rubbery kind of material and it's about two feet long. I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but that'll give you plenty of leverage if you're doing, you know, 100 to 250 pound feet. That's a lot of, a lot of torque. And uh, if you want to shut it off, you can just hold the power button in for a couple of seconds or Let's see, it'll go off, there you go. Or it'll auto shut off after a few minutes just sitting there so you don't have to worry about draining the uh, battery. It does not come with the batteries. It takes two AA batteries, which are no big deal. They just go right in, one, two, three. It is. Uh, it does seem very well made. The chrome is nice, the finish is nice. The ratcheting is nice. It's real tight ratchet, so you can get into those you know, tight spots. Um, the only thing that I don't like about the tool is it doesn't have a degree chart on it. So torque to yield bolts, if you don't know what those are, basically, you know, you think of a bolt, you tight it, tighten it down and the threads are actually pulling or stretching. So the elasticity, so you have a torque to yield bolt, let's say for instance, like a cylinder head bolt on, on an engine. Um, you would torque it down. I don't know. I'm making this up hypothetically. Let's say we go to 130 pound feet and then the book specs that you go 90 degrees past that mark. So you go to 130, stop, and then you go 90 degrees. Well, some of the nicer, uh, not nicer, but more expensive torque wrenches have that degree in there. So you can kind of calibrate, you know, if you've gone 90 degrees or not. Anyway, this doesn't have it. Um, that's the only downfall I'd say with this torque wrench. Otherwise, it's I think it's wonderful. Um, you could to get around that you can mark your bolt with let's say, like white out or sharpie, and then physically you have to eyeball it to see you know how many degrees you went past that torque setting. So that's a yield to torque bolt. It's just basically stretching it out. Once you torque those down, that's it. They're done. Uh, you take them off, you got to throw them out, and you should be using new ones. Hey, well, that was a fun torque wrench adventure we just took, so I appreciate you guys stopping in. It's important to use a torque wrench. You want to make sure you get the proper torque settings. I mean, the obvious things would be uh, it's the bolt or nut is too loose, which is not a good thing, especially if you're, let's say, for instance, you're putting on a wheel. You want to get the proper settings. Um, you over-torque it, you over-tighten it, you could stretch or break the stud or the lug bolt. 
which wouldn't be a good thing. You could damage the rotor. I don't know, possibly maybe bearing damage. It doesn't lead to anything good. You over tighten, corrosion sets in. Next thing you know, you need to replace that or change that wheel. You got a flat tire, you're on the side of the road. Then you're really screwed because you don't have your air tools with you. So, you know, it is important to use one of these. I'm going to leave, like I said, the link to this in the description down below. I think they retail for under $150. And for that kind of accuracy, uh, precision tool, I think it's a very good value. And uh, I want to thank you guys for stopping in. Follow me on Instagram, OzStar1, right here on YouTube, of course. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. And let me know what you uh, use for your torque settings, whether you go full ugga dugga, you use the micrometer style that you prefer, or have you gone to digital, and what do you think? Alrighty then, I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.